Performance management. We talk a lot on this channel about KPIs, but is performance management all about KPIs? Let's find out, coming right up. So we have an old friend back this week, Trent Morris. Welcome, Trent. Uh, we're going to be talking about performance management. And you, you tell me it's not all about KPIs. So give us another perspective of it. Thanks, Rob. So, yeah, in my opinion, it's not all about KPIs. And to be honest, the I think most people look at KPIs incorrectly anyway. You know, when, when I develop a supplier relationship management framework, you know, which is the governing piece of work above, sits above performance management, what I'm working with the suppliers and what I'm paying for when I'm paying suppliers and service providers is 100%. You know, we talk a lot about KPIs being 99% or 98%, but is that really what we're paying for? You know, or are we paying for 100%? You know, if we think about the perfect order, do we want the probability of the perfect order to be 100? Of course we do. We want our customers and our clients to be satisfied and happy every time they order something from us. You know, and so as we're looking at performance management, you know, we need to recognise that we're actually paying for 100% quality service. However, we are willing to accept the fact that we do live in a world where things happen and that's where the diminished idea of a KPI comes from. You know, so a KPI set at 90, 98%, I may, I want 100% service level, but I'm willing to accept 98 because I know things go wrong. You know, and at the end of the day, if we're only focused on the 98, we probably won't hit the 98. So I think performance management is more about trust around the service or the supply of the product that is being provided rather than just hitting some arbitrary number and recognising the fact that if we as, as service providers are aiming for 100% and if we as you know, operational or procurement personnel are, are expecting 100%, we're actually going to get much more out of the relationship than just some, simply hitting some arbitrary number, which may or may not be possible. And I think the other thing that we're starting to see is we're starting to see this idea that the KPI is the number that we want to hit, but we don't actually expect any retribution or any any challenges unless we fall below a number that's even lower than that percent, potentially say 95%. And I've actually seen that in a contract re recently where they had the KPI, but then they had a critical failure indicator as well. And I'm like, well, hang on, if, if, if the... KPI is 98 and the critical failure line is 95. Well, in reality, that makes the critical, sorry, that makes the KPI 95. And I think we need to all get back to the idea that we are expecting 100%, but we're willing to accept a slightly lower number because we know that the environment changes, there are challenges, and therefore we can't always get the 100% that we're paying for. That's a great perspective. And, and I know you're, you're really coming at this from a procurement perspective and managing suppliers, but the same would hold true, would it not, within our own operations? If we're, if we're managing our warehousing operations, our transport operations, you know, I, I love that idea that, you know, 98 is the target and the critical number is 95, therefore by default 95 becomes the target. You're right, we should be aiming at 100, surely, even with our internal operations. Yeah, 100%. You know, so if you're aiming at that 100% line, then the expect the the it's reasonable to to say that you know 100% will can be achieved, mm. but if you're only aiming for 98, then you're only expecting 98 to be achieved, and that's not really what we're after. You know, so if you think about, you know, if you're a two percent difference between 100 and 98 means that you're willing to accept one failure out of every 50. Mm. Yeah. Now, if you were talking about things that were highly precise, that wouldn't be good enough. You know. So why do we accept it when you know? All it takes is a little bit of attention to get it back up there. And I think this is where performance management moves into supplier relationship management to say, OK, if I'm expecting 98, but I want 100, then we need to make sure that we as a, as a couple, as in the supplier or the service provider and the customer, are working together in a continuously improving way or a continuous improvement program to actually get it back up to 100 if it is falling short and not accepting 95 as a, as a failure point. I mean, at the end of the day, if 98's the KPI, 98's the KPI. And if you're failing regularly, there's a problem that needs to be addressed and not just accept the fact that, oh, okay, we've got room to move on that extra few percentage points. 
Okay, no, that's, a, that's a great perspective. And so for those watching, what, what's one tip that you could give them uh, if they're concerned about this? What could they go and look at in their own business to see? Have we got an issue or not? Are we measuring this properly? Yeah, I, and I think the, the, the number one thing you need to look at is, are you well, first of all, you need to have KPIs in place. And, and if you have any challenges in that, obviously, please please reach out. We, we have lots of um, uh, opportunity to, to help in that area. But the, the you know, we've, what we're finding is the fact that because they're not well defined, they're not looked at regularly, people fail regularly. Yeah, so as you know, it's I think it's an old Peter Drucker saying that the management expert that you can't you can't manage if you don't measure, or you can't manage what you don't measure. You know, so make sure that you're identifying what those KPIs are, what are the actual critical things within your business that you need to be looking at to succeed, and then measure them. Understand what they are. You know, and, and start small and work big if you need to, or alternatively, start big and work small. You know, if you just want to see what your overall customer service measure looks like, just talk to your customers and find out how often you're delivering on time the right products and getting it invoiced accurately. You know, and, and start by putting the right measures in place and then actually spending the time to look at them and understand what they are so that you can improve upon them over time. Excellent. No, some great tips there. And for those watching, uh, we're talking broader than just KPIs. We're talking about performance management. But I'd love to hear your comments down below on KPIs particularly. What's the most effective KPI that you've found in your organization? It might not be organizational wide. It might be in your particular function. But what's a KPI that you found really, really effective? Love to hear in the comments down below. So thank you, Trent. Thank you all for watching. And we'll see you next week. Bye for now.